Hi everybody, Mr. Farmer here, and today we're talking about short run cost curves for AP microeconomics. Now previously we read a little bit, so I want to review that. So some of the things we're going to be talking about are things like total product, the total amount produced with all the inputs combined. We should be able to know how to calculate average product, that would be the total product divided by the quantity of inputs, and marginal product, the change in total product divided by the change in inputs. Now we're going to use these as stepping stones for later conversations, and we're going to be aware of that today. Here we go. So first, let's make sure we get some definitions. Fixed costs. Fixed costs are things like rent. No matter how many units you produce or how many hours you work in a day, you still owe a fixed amount of things like rent. If you work for one hour a day versus 10 hours a day, the rent for that day is still the same. That would be a fixed. A salary would be a fixed cost as well. Compare that to a variable cost, which are when costs do in fact change. The typical example are things like hourly wages. If you work for $8.50 an hour for eight hours a day, then you owe $19 or $20. If you work for 10 hours, then you owe that much more. So again, because you change the number of inputs, in this case number of hours, the cost varied, hence variable costs. Now, important thing to know is the variable costs are also referred to as operational costs. They only exist if the firm operates. That's going to come into play later in the course, not today. Now, there's a couple of equations we want to know. Total cost, that would be all costs associated with producing that good, that quantity of goods specifically. So it's going to be the total fixed cost plus the total variable costs. We want to know the average fixed cost. That's going to be the total fixed cost. And we can just say fixed cost. It's assumed to be total. Fixed cost divided by the quantity of units produced or quantity of outputs. We also want to know the average variable cost. Now, we do want to use abbreviations. So average fixed cost would be AFC. Average variable cost would be AVC. Because we're actually going to be putting these as curves on the graph later. So we want to be able to not have to write out average variable cost every time. And so average variable is the total variable cost divided by, again, the quantity of outputs. There's more average total cost is the total cost divided by the quantity. Or if the total fixed cost plus total variable cost equals the total cost, well, if I put that all over Q by the quantity, then my total fixed cost divided by my quantity my average fixed cost, plus my total variable cost divided by the quantity, or my average variable cost, would then equal my average total cost. You can see my asterisk. This is going to become a very important equation. No, it's not a challenging equation, but it becomes important later when we talk about things like minimizing loss and shutdown scenarios. So the average fixed cost plus average variable cost equals the average total cost. And last is marginal cost. We've seen lots of marginal equations, so it's the same. Change in total cost divided by the change in the quantity. Okay, I want you to practice something. Try drawing a marginal product curve. The y-axis would be quantity of outputs. The y-axis, the x-axis would be quantity of inputs. Pause for a second, and then we're going to keep going. So hopefully yours looks about like this. It's an upside-down check mark. Now it looks this way because of the law of diminishing returns. The first stage is the increasing returns. Again, this is in the short run. So in the, say we're talking about short run costs. So we have fixed resources. We have two computers to use for our business. So the first two workers, they're really efficient with that. And when I hired the second worker, they even added more because they can do more. Then I keep going. I hire my third person, fourth person. And that's when I start to get to this second stage called diminishing or decreasing returns. I only have those two computers, so when I hired the third person, yeah, they can supervise, they can help out, but you just ran out of your fixed resource, in this case, the computer. So you start to hit that. And then last, you get to the negative returns. And um, a business should stop before this because you're literally getting negative use out of your employees or your inputs, so stop before them. So we don't do too much with a third stage because we should be done before that. Now I'm going to take this and do something with it. So let's take a little example. If that x-axis was number of workers, and if that was my only variable input, and the and I pay them $10 an hour, or per work, or whatever, 
think about this, what would happen to the cost to produce each additional unit that they produced? Well, let's see what happens. So I'm going to pay my first worker $10, and they produced about three units. I'm going to kind of do ballpark figures. So for $10, I got three units, which means each one of those units cost me about $3.33. So the marginal cost to produce those three units individually was $3.33, and so there's my little dot there. I hire my second worker. Again, we're in the increasing returns right now. We're in that first stage of production. And I pay them the same $10, and they produce about four additional units, a marginal product of four which means each one of those units cost me an average additional cost of $2.50. I'm going to hire my third worker, and they actually produce the same amount. So they, it cost me about another $2.50 per unit to produce that. This is where it starts to get interesting. I'm going to hire my fourth person. I'm going to pay them $10 an hour, and they're going to produce, you, know, you can see, right around three units. So what's starting to happen is my costs are going to start to increase now, for the same $10, I get those three units. So it costs me about $3.50, $3.20. Again, it's kind of ballpark figures here. And then I say, you know what? I'm going to keep hiring because of whatever reason. I'm going to pay that next person $10. They produce two units for me. So for $10, I get an additional two units, which means on average, it costs me an additional $5 per unit to produce that, or a marginal cost of $5 per unit. I hire my sixth worker. I don't know why. They literally don't give me anything. The costs just go really, really high. And so what we can see here is if I put a curve on that, the additional cost to produce each one of those units kind of looks like an inverse of the marginal product curve. And that is actually the marginal cost curve. This is so true that we actually have other graphs. If you go online, if you go in a textbook, you'll probably see something along, along these lines. The marginal product is and average product are mirrored. They're reciprocals of the marginal cost and the average variable cost because of the stages of production. The marginal cost curve shape is due to the law of diminishing returns. We saw that as we did that practice. Mathematically, the marginal cost crosses the AVC and the ATC at their minimum points. We'll discuss that later, but that's going to be a reality of this. So again, we had all these equations going on. So if you didn't have them, make sure you get them down. But you might be given something along these lines. So you're given a whole table, and you're to fill it out. That's what you do. Well, here's the question. At the quantity of zero, the left-hand side, that's how many units you're producing, you have a total cost of $3. But you didn't produce anything. If you didn't produce anything, you have zero operational cost, that variable cost curve. So how is it you still have a fixed uh, a $3 total cost? Because you have a fixed cost of $3. And fixed costs never change. You can go and be like, yep, there's my fixed cost. Now... In order to find the variable cost, we do total cost minus fixed cost to get $5. 8 minus 3 is 5. 11 minus 3 is 8 and everything else. On the right-hand side, the first or the quantity of zero is all undefined. You're dividing by that. So don't worry about that. For the first unit marginal cost, we've seen this equation before. 8 minus 3, change in total cost, divided by the change of quantity. 1, you get 5. We've done a lot of this before. 11 minus 8, change in total cost, divided by the change of quantity, and so forth. Average totals, I'm not too worried about these equations. 8 divided by 1, 11 total cost, divided by 2, quantity, 550, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. If you need to pause to double check your math, please go ahead and do that. Otherwise, here we go. What are some points of interest? One, the average fixed cost continually decreases. Why? The total fixed cost never changes, and your quantity is continually increasing, so your average fixed cost will continually decrease. Two, the minimum average variable cost curve occurs where the marginal cost is equal to the average variable cost. Here, it actually happens between two different units, around units 6 and 7, somewhere in that range. If we had a graph, we could see uh, exactly where it is, but it's going to be somewhere between those two units. 
you can see that would be potentially the minimum point. What else is of interest that we can grab from this? The minimum average total cost. This one's going to have a lot more importance uh, later on. The minimum AVC does have significance, but not as much um, overall impact for us. So the minimum ATC still also occurs when the margin cost equals the average total cost. And we see that happening at the seventh unit. Three, margin cost equal to three, average total cost. And yeah, if you go to the sixth unit, usually there's two units where the ATC is at its minimum. You can see at the sixth unit, it's also equal to three. Mathematically, though, margin cost equal to average total cost, it must be a minimum average total cost. This also means it's productively efficient. Productive efficiency is when the industry or the firm specifically is producing at the most efficient output in regards to both fixed and variable resources. How do you do that mathematically? Well, the minimum or the lowest average total cost, meaning both fixed and variable resources are talked about, occurs when you're at the minimum ATC. So that quantity of seven would be the productive efficient. Last thing we can see is the average variable cost plus the average fixed cost equals the ATC. And you can see it just add up the, the right three columns. So five AVC plus three AFC equals eight ATC. And maybe rounding aside, you'd see that that would be a true statement going forward. Graphically, here's what it'll look like. We have a March cost curve. ATC, AVC, if you mapped all that data out, this is about what it'll look like. So a minimum AVC occurs right here. In between the 6th and the 7th units, I just made an approximation of 248, but it will be at that price point. The minimum ATC occurs at the March cost equal to ATC, and we found that to be true at the third dollar at the 7th unit. So mathematically, you have to say this. Productive quantity and productive efficiency occurs at the 7th unit. That's productive efficiency. Now, in regards to that equation, AFC plus AVC equals ATC, it is going to play a role later in the microeconomics. So why is it the case? Well, here's why it's going to be a bigger deal. The average total cost, which is indicated by the orange, equals, mathematically, the AVC, which is what I have in blue, plus the AFC. What this means is the vertical difference between ATC and AVC equals the average fixed cost, or the purple section. This is why a lot of times you don't actually have the average fixed cost on your graphs, because mathematically, graphically, you don't need it. You can calculate it that way. That, the purple area, the average fixed cost, the fact that that equals average fixed cost, it's going to become of some significance and importance later there. So please make sure you understand this. So again, the takeaways, there are two ways of looking at these cost curves. There's the data table, you see this on the right. And if you mapped all that out, you get the graph on the left. They say the same thing, just in two different versions. All right, until next time.